Hi there, I'm Ahmed and today we'll be looking at how to control TerraBloom's fan speed using an Arduino. This tutorial is aimed at a total beginner, so no need to know any prior knowledge. We'll teach you everything you need to know here, right now, today. So with just about the right tools and an Arduino, you'll be on your way to start controlling the speed of a TerraBloom fan. So let's go ahead and get started. Excited to have you here today. For us to be able to control the TerraBloom fan, we need to apply a pulse width modulation signal that ranges from 0 to 10 volts. This is equivalent to saying, let us control the amount of average voltage delivered to the fan. With a pulse width modulation signal, we can control the amount of time the signal stays on per period. This is called the duty cycle, which is the ratio of the time the signal is on over the total time of the period. Keep in mind that a period is the time it takes for one single square wave to repeat itself. We see here that this signal repeats itself every 100 millisecond. The time on is 50 millisecond. When we divide these two, we get the duty cycle to be 50%. We then use the duty cycle to get the average voltage delivered to the pulse width modulation input of the motor, which is 50% of the maximum voltage of 10 volts. Therefore, the average voltage currently showing up at the pulse width modulation input of the TerraBloom fan is 5 volts. Today's objective is about controlling the TerraBloom fan with an Arduino. The problem is most Arduinos can only provide up to 5 volts maximum pulse width modulation range. This is a problem because we are then only working with half the possible power of the TerraBloom fan. To have full control of the speed of the TerraBloom fan, we need to shift up the 5 volts to 10 volts. Only if there is a way to do that. Oh wait, of course there is. A level shifter circuit. Let's build one. The following is the level shifter circuit we will be building. Its function is to shift up the level of the pulse width modulation coming out of the Arduino at the input terminal from 0 to 5 volts to show up at the output as a level between 0 to 10 volts. This is accomplished by using two transistors connected in the way you see here. Keep in mind that a transistor is a three terminal electronic device that allows for us to use it as a voltage controlled switch. For the bipolar junction transistor shown here, if the voltage at the base is more than 0 volts, current starts to flow from the collector terminal to the emitter side of the bipolar junction transistor, closing the switch. If voltage is 0 volts or less, then the switch is opened and no current can flow. Let's test both extremes of our square wave. At the base of the Q1, we will start with 0 volts, thus the switch is opened at Q1 making the voltage at point A equals 10 volts. This would in turn mean that the switch Q2 is closed and therefore the voltage at point B equals 0 volts. This is because the ground is now connected to point B. Now let's test the 5 volts at the base of Q1. The switch is now closed, thus making the voltage at point A equals 0 volts. This will in turn make the switch at Q2 open and thus making the voltage at point B equals to 10 volts. Therefore, for a 0 volts input, we show a 0 volts output. And for a 5 volt input, we show a 10 volt output. Simple, right? Now let's go ahead and build this circuit with a breadboard. You will need a breadboard. Any simple breadboard will do. You will need a screw wire terminal with four inputs. This is not necessary but very useful when building the circuit and in staying a bit more organized. Wires, you will need various sizes and colors. We'll need two 1 kilo ohm resistors and two 20 kilo ohm resistors. You will need two bipolar junction transistors NPN type that are able to withstand only a collector current of less than 100 milliampere. In our case, we are using BC547, but you may use any NPN bipolar junction transistor in the market that satisfies this circuit's minimum operating current. You will need the TRRS 3.5 millimeter jack that exposes four wires colored black, red, yellow, and blue. This wire should come with the TerraBloom fan pack. You will need the TerraBloom fan. In my case, I am using the 4-inch ECMF fan 
but you may use any of the TerraBloom AC fans. These procedures will apply the same way. You will also need the power cord that came with the TerraBloom EC fan. Lastly, an Arduino. Building the level shifter using a breadboard. Using the materials gathered earlier, let us now begin building the circuit. Follow along as I explain step by step. Install both the bipolar junction transistors, Q1 and Q2, in any open slots in your breadboard. Keep in mind that the breadboard's vertical columns are all connected as the same net, such that, for instance, column number 15 is connected to A, B, C, D, and E. Now connect the first terminal of the 20 kilo ohm resistor referenced R1 in the schematic to the base of the first transistor and the second terminal to the opposite pin after the DIP line. Connect the 1 kilo ohm resistor referenced as R2 to the collector of the first bipolar junction transistor and the second terminal of the resistor to the power rail positive terminal. Here, I connected the orange wire in this way so I can connect my oscilloscope to it to see how the wave form looks like. You do not have to connect this wire if you are not using an oscilloscope. Connect the emitter side of the first transistor to the ground or negative rail. Connect the R3 or the 20 kilo ohm resistor to the collector of the first transistor, Q1 in the schematic, and second terminal to the base of the second transistor, or Q2 in the schematic. Connect the R4 resistor to the collector of the second transistor Q2 and to the positive power rail. Install a wire between the emitter side of Q2 to the ground rail or the negative rail. Connect the wire terminal to the red board and the four terminals. Remember, this step is optional and is only used to keep the breadboard organized. You may use any way you prefer to connect the four terminals to your breadboard. Install a wire between the collector pin of Q2 to the blue terminal wire going to the pulse width modulation controller of the TerraBloom fan. Connect the red wire, which is the 10 volt from the TerraBloom fan, to the positive power rail. Then connect the black ground to the negative power rail of the breadboard. Make a wire connection between the negative or ground rail of the top rail to the bottom rail to make a complete connection between the two in case we need to use the ground on the bottom rail. Bring your Arduino close to your breadboard. Connect the ground wire from the breadboard ground rail to any of the Arduino's ground pin headers. They should be labeled with GND or ground. Then install a wire between the base of the first transistor to pin number 11. Now connect the USB plug to your Arduino and then to your PC. Connect the TRRS 3.5mm jack side to the TerraBloom fan and screw in the connection. Do not connect the power cord to the TerraBloom just yet. We will do so when we start coding in the next section. Go ahead and follow the link in the description um, and in the video uh, to the TerraBloom EC fans repo here um, and follow along. We want to go ahead and select the Arduino platform. Here you will see the basic fan speed control.ino file uh, here. What we have here first is we, we define a, the fan pin, which was uh, pin number 11. So what we have here, I've written two sample or two, two functions for us here. The first function is to set the duty cycle. And this function really takes care of the idea of multiplying the duty cycle by 2.55 in order for us to change the duty cycle from 0 to 100% to 0 to 255. The reason behind this is because the analog write function, which is what we mainly want to use to generate the pulse width modulation signal, is it takes in a, a, a byte value, and, 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 and one byte value means it's uh, in decimal value, means that it ranges from 0 to 255. And so 255 here corresponds to 100% duty cycle, and 0 corresponds to 0. Um, so very easy to follow here. Uh, next up here is I created this ramp fan speed function here. You would have the ability to input a minimum duty cycle, which is where you want to start, 
um, you know, say we want to ramp it up from zero to 100, from zero to 100 percent, right? So the minimum duty cycle will be zero, and then the maximum duty cycle would be 100. Now, how fast do you want to ramp it up from zero to 100? Is that's where you want to go ahead and put that uh, as an integer value here in millisecond. Okay, just just keep that in mind that this is in millisecond uh, the, to to ramp up the speed. Now, um, and, and it's it's really simple after that, it's just uh, here we have an if and else function here that just checks to see whether you are ramping down or ramping up, um, and then it just uh, uh, uses a for loop here to ramp up and down uh, as uh, at increments of 1% each time, okay? And this is the uh, uh, the setup function here uh, that that's provided by every every standard Arduino code. Here we have the void setup, and then we have the void loop. Uh, the loop here is is constantly and always repeatedly being ran here, um, and the setup runs only once. And that's why um, for this sample code here, I just do it one time, where I ramp up the speed of the. As an example, I ramp up the fan speed from zero to one hundred in 20 seconds and then I ramp up the uh, and then I ramp down the speed again from 100 to back to zero in 500 milliseconds so it should be it should ramp up pretty slow but ramp down really fast if you if you go to raw here and you press on raw you will actually get the raw code here uh, what you want to do is you can go ahead and select all of the code here and press control copy control C and then go ahead and go to a new, uh, open up a new Arduino uh, instance. And once a new Arduino window opens up, as you can see, I already have my Arduino code already loaded in here. Uh, you can go ahead and just load in your, uh, uh, paste your code in here and save it. The first and most important thing is we need to go ahead and make sure that we have our Arduino connected with the USB. So now should be a good time for you to connect the USB if you haven't already your PC um, and then what we want to make sure is we have the, selected the right board which is Arduino Uno in this case and you, all can, you can always select it under Arduino AVR boards Arduino Uno. Um, the next most important thing is the port number or serial port number. Um, for me here it's COM3 but it could be different for you uh, so just check your, your system and make sure that you connect to the right COM um, and that should be it. Okay, and all you have to do now is just go ahead and press on upload and that should upload the code directly to the Arduino Uno and you will have a running uh, example. And if everything ran correctly, your uh, fan should start to ramp up. As you can hear in my background right now, ramping up and uh, should be good to go. Alright, that is it for today's uh, tutorial. I hope you learned something new. Um, let me know in the comments or uh, via direct message if you have any questions. And I'll see you next time.